again, Maria, thank you for uh, giving us this historical context, which is precisely the content, the problem of what not only this event, but the whole project is about. There is obviously a feeling that an epoch is coming to its end, that it is closing, and that this event somehow marks this closing of the epoch of, I would call it post-communism. This is the world after 1998-90. This is the epoch of a hope and uh, uh, at the same time, the epoch of a disappointment. But let me now come back to the project itself. And Bernd, you are in charge of this institution. And I'm curious, and this is what I, I would like to ask you, how how did, did you, how this institution has found itself addressed, so to say, by this project, by these topics, by these questions about the epoch? You know, here in Berlin, in, in, in this traumatic, former traumatic site of, 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 of history, of beautiful, pictures of liberation and of sort of disappointment. How, again, how did you find the connection between this site, historical site, this institution, the role, the idea of this institution and the ideas of this project, please? Yeah, uh, I mentioned this already this morning when uh, Maria um, met me about three, four years ago and mentioned the concept of former West, I directly reacted saying, wow, this is the concept really inscribed in this institution and in this building and the institution uh, we have now. And uh, I mentioned already uh, two, three aspects this morning who have more a historical reference uh, maybe I go also uh, looking into the future. I would um, distinguish four stages of this inscription of former West in this building. Um, the, and the, the first two I make very quick because I mentioned at least the first uh, this morning. Uh, the building itself is a political icon of what the West meant to be after the Second World War, in the Cold War situation. It was a present of the United States to the city of Berlin, and the purpose and the objective to build this building was to uh, send a message to the Eastern part what the West is, meaning freedom of speech, liberty, openness, and so on. So, uh, in the Cold War situation, this building was, so to say, the incarnation, if you want to say, the materialization of a certain kind of thinking, how the West saw itself. Uh, then, in 1980, the roof collapsed, and um, there we just had a, a, a talk by an anthropologist uh, saying, I mean, this was really symbolic. Uh, even, uh, and you know, the music band Einstürzende Neubauten, Einstürzende Neubau Neubauten claim that they brought the roof to this collapse. So there is an exchange of cultural development, political development at that time. But I think what is also significant in 1980 is that uh, these are the years when Thatcher and Reagan started uh, really to restructure the West too and uh, uh, laying the base for neoliberal uh, developments we had then in the 90s as driving force of, of globalization uh, Maria just talked about. Um, so the roof collapsed and uh, so the old dream, we know what the West is, to some extent collapsed with this too. Uh, not everybody realizing this and Maria brought that out very, um, very, uh, in a very uh, 
strong way that uh, uh, up to now most people in the West didn't start to reflect what the changes means for us. And uh, in 1989, uh, the Haus der Kultur in der Welt was uh, inaugurated, the building was restored, and uh, a new institution, because the Haus der Kultur in der Welt as Haus der Kultur in der Welt did not exist before. Uh, the, the building was, so to say, uh, just a symbol of the Cold War discourse from a Western perspective. And uh, when the um, house started, basically it started in the old world order. Uh, and it started in uh, spring 1989, so the wall was not down yet. Uh, and meaning the old world, uh, world order, meaning there are three worlds, the first, the second, and the third. And now we, uh, from the first world, have to take care of the third world. Second world was not so important, was just next door, it was too, 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 too known, um, as people thought. Uh, as people thought. Uh, too known to us, but the third world um, should have a representation in the center of Europe or in the center of uh, Germany at least. So the idea was uh, to uh, create a forum where non-Western worlds are represented. And you, you could see, I mean, how uh, the notion, how the Western concept of looking at these cult so-called cultures was really inscribed from the beginning and into uh, the task and the objectives of the house. Um, and uh, sorry yeah. for, for interrupting yeah, you. Uh, uh, this is beautifully described. The first addressee is the East, so to say, the West presenting itself to the to the to the East. The second. Well, the, in, in the meantime, the East has disappeared. The second addressee uh, was the so-called third world. But somehow, the idea of the third world, you, we, we don't use it, no, no longer use it. We use different uh, uh, concepts. But this addressee seems also to have disappeared. So your addresser in a search of addressee now, aren't you? And, expecting of the, f the, the, the project you wrote to help you to find the new yeah. addressee. Yeah. It's it, a problem, I know, but <laughs> this is why we... No, it's, it's um, gathering. You uh, are preaching already one further step, and then you would have, you would ask this question. Uh, you are right, I mean, looking from uh, the first phase of the Haus der Kultur in der Welt, and I was uh, actually, let's say, when I started again in 2006 here at the house, people asked me this question, what are you doing now? I mean, uh, Mo Hamburger Bahnhof, National Gallery, all these uh, in the art institutions, they show uh, artists from Africa, Latin America, so what are you doing? But before coming to this, uh, and I, I'm going to address this, there was a, a second phase when mid of the 90s, it became uh, clear to the house. I mean, uh, to some extent, it was a kind of Trojan horse uh, saying, we define the world in, by inviting these people from other parts of the world, but these people also came. So since the people came, you were confronted with talking to them. And uh, of course, then in the 90s, there were a lot of discussion about the concept of the house and um, also uh, challenging, of course, this concept because the definition power in the whole game was still a Western definition power and not uh, a power uh, coming from the other side of the space. Uh, so, um, the, yeah, the, the, this original concept of the house was challenged by the invitees. Um, and then, uh, since the more or less mid of the 90s, end of the 90s, uh, the house was taking on the post-colonial discourse. The post-colonial discourse became a major frame for the house to work in. With one, I mean, there were a lot of levels of how that reflected in the work of the house, but one major level was to invite uh, non-European curators to work here. So not just defining the space and then saying, please, uh, we invite this or that artist, but really giving the, uh, the opportunity to, in that sense, from the perspective of the house, to the other side to engage. And so the, the house was the so, entrance sorry, point for, for the for, for, 
interrupting you. Uh, in um, how much is it uh, uh, the moment also of uh, German, uh, of of Germany and of of uh, this city being a capital of Germany, uh, of um, reconceptualizing its position in the in the in the world? Do you do you have any any sort of responsibility, cultural responsibility, towards what we call Germany. Uh, we haven't mentioned the word. We were talking about Europe, about the first, second, third world. No, but it's a national okay. institution, isn't it? It's a, it's a national institution and uh, uh, reflecting on this sit historical situation, uh, let's say end of the 90s, beginning of the zero years, what you have to see is that Berlin became the capital uh, of, of Germany, so uh, there was a transfer of power to, to the city and because of the uh, so-called unification or reunification of Germany, uh, what you also had was uh, in the me mentality of Germans uh, that now the consequences of fascism and Third, uh, and third Reich have been more or less overcome and we have to look for new roots of our historical identity, historical understanding. So what you had since the 90s, starting a new conservatism uh, as far as thinking but also institution building uh, and institutions are concerned and this was the environment in which the Haus der Kultur und der Welt uh, was operating. But, of course, with the political mandate, so to say, to be opener to the world, to, uh, for German culture and German society, yes. But uh, I think for, for people not uh, being involved, let's say, in the German history, I think it's a very important point to see that uh, their uh, reference to the Third Reich, to fascism, really was overshadowing a lot of discourses uh, as far as international developments were uh, concerned. And there was a remapping of the world in the 90s, uh, as, uh, as I just explained it. So, um, do I have a question? Uh, um, we, can, we can, yes, uh, uh, no, but we can come. I would like to... Uh, uh, per perhaps I make now a, shor yes, a shortcut to the situation we are in, because uh, I also would be interested uh, to discuss this because we are in a kind of ex experimental situation uh, at the moment where we try out new concepts and new ways to rethink also the institution, who we are. Um, I, I would like to start with uh, this one very important point, but I think that when the West uh, seems to be the uh, uh, to win the game against the East and the rest of the world, uh, from my perspective, the internal contradictions inbuilt in Western development became much more visible. Uh, and what we are facing now is on many levels a deep crisis. Um, and to some extent one could say we have a kind of resistance of the objects. Uh, when you look at the ecological crisis, when you look at the financial crisis, uh, when you look at the political crisis, all these crises are based on certain kind of object constructions. And basically, this is an epistemological problem. With inbuilt in this is a political problem. The epistemological problem is very deep into Western thinking. Uh, and uh, from my perspective, the real really basis for these problems are the objectivation processes taking place uh, in the West since the 17th century, basically. And what do I mean with this? Uh, what I mean with this is you have to structure the world that everything becomes an object in order to be, uh, that science can deal with it. Uh, I mean, uh, this is re uh, true as far as nature is concerned, uh, and this transformed nature into resources for us, but it's also concerned up to the point of the mind that in, in the 19th century, you had to objectify psychic processes to make them 
an object for science. So what happened is that science defines what reality is. And science at the, now, because of this crisis, I described it because of this resistance of the objects, is in a deep crisis. So what, what is interesting now for a cultural institution such as us is to tackle these, uh, these problems and um, try to rethink subject-object relations, nature-culture relations, these dualisms inbuilt in, uh, in our histories, which were also the basis for colonialism. Because when I start to look at other cultures as objects, which I in, uh, try to analyze, which I try to exploit, because they are objects, they are no human beings. Th this is the basis of, of Western thinking, to objectify the world, to make it manageable. And uh, when you start to rethink this, uh, then you, you start to, um, to look for new ways of knowledge production. You spoke about this uh, this morning a lot. And this is the project we are really in at the moment. Uh, what kind of new ways of knowledge productions you can invent, you can uh, find in order to overcome this basic crisis of Western thinking of Western uh, yeah, epistemologies and ontologies too at the, at the, at the same time. Uh, Perhaps one, one final word to that because I think it's crucial uh, as far, it has implications for institutions. What, what you could see in the arts in the last 20 years is exactly because of these strict ontologies underneath let's say, the surface of Western thinking with uh, the, the attempt to make, pro, uh, to, to work on processes, to uh, um, de-objectify and make uh, processes fluid. After 20 years, let's say, where this sometimes better, sometimes worse, uh, was uh, exercised in the arts, uh, and has impacts, of course, on, on institutions. I think it would be interesting to discuss if one can build up new institutions, and I would uh, love to consider the House of Culture in the Welt as an example in this, um, which reflecting on these uh, fluidity processes, but making them fruitful for institution building. Because I think, uh, we are at the point where you have to bridge the gap between to make everything fluid into building up new ways of institutions. And that, I think, would be interesting to discuss at a certain point. Which is, uh, which, yes, uh, please, if you like to comment, please. Uh, just, just, a, just a brief, does this work? Does this work? It does. Just a brief comment that, uh, that this is precisely the reason why one of the strands we set up as uh, hosted by Eri Drogov is uh, titled infrastructure, not specifically art institution or institution, but an infrastructure in, in much larger sense, asking a question that Eri Drogov so, so uh, poignantly uh, puts together when we congratulate ourselves in the West with infrastructure that we see as enabling, perfectly working microphones and white cubes, etc., etc. Have we ever asked ourselves, are these supposedly enabling structure not actually preventing us to think the world otherwise. So, so there is a seed of thought, how do we envision mm -hmm. uh, a, new, a potentially new infrastructure, not necessarily our institution, but infrastructure, um, in order to move forward out of this uh, kind of impasse we find ourselves in. Uh, I think, of course, is the situation is ambivalent. You know, the, the institutions is conceptually in a limbo. But this is also, at the same time, the, the chance. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. this is very interesting. I asked you, uh, what is the position of the institution in the Germany? And in t it, it turns out that the question is, what is the position of the institution, institution to the world of the objects? <laughs> what is... Uh, uh, Conceptually, this conceptual is so, such a deep challenge. It's not about Germany anymore. No. This, is, this is something new. Uh, Stefan, you teach in London at Gold, Goldsmiths. Is this an institution that has a problem with its identity in terms of knowledge production? Or 
or like 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 this one, or or it it everything is okay under control, uh, <laughs> smoothly moving towards the better, greater knowledge uh, that will make us all happier. What do you mean by its identity? Uh, well, as a university or well, as this is try to answer. As code, <laughs> try try to answer identity. Uh, well, the context is an institution of knowledge production. How this institution conceives of itself precisely in in this sense of what does it mean now? You know, being challenged by 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 the objects who suddenly we who <laughs> come, you know, and pose questions to us, humans. How it is, how do you feel sort of crisis? Or not only, you know, uh, objectively uh, in, in the institution, but in, in, in the very task you identify with as, as someone who teaches, who teaches theory, who, who deals with the concepts. So this is... Well, yes, in terms, I mean, uh, as, as far as Goldsmith as a university or as this particular university is concerned, I'm not sure if I'm the per perfect person to answer that question, uh, but um, in, in, in larger terms, that is in terms of the academic production of knowledge um, and also the, the various disciplinary systems and the setting up of disciplinary boundaries, which, by the way, work quite differently at a university like Goldsmith than as, as, as compared to Vienna or, 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 or Belgium um, or France. So you have those different sets of disciplinary boundaries. Uh, and I do think, in order to come back to what you said and also to what, what I said this morning, um, that one of the tasks in, in terms of an epistemological crisis that we are undergoing is certainly to, uh, to rethink difference and differences and uh, um, not in the sense of, uh, of you know, uh, putting one more time the accent on differences and uh, be because there's also the problem that uh, the focus on difference can be uh, a very strong means to, to, to uh, dissimulate the question of equality, for instance. Um, not in that sense, uh, but in the sense of, uh, I quoted this this morning, what, what Jean and John Kamarov uh, call the history of difference uh, and, and referring to a period of 20 years, not even 20 years, between Desmond Tutu in South Africa saying, well, we, we blacks detest ethnicity as, because it is a regime of difference uh, to the post-apartheid uh, minister of, of justice and constitutional developing saying, well, we have to integrate all differences in, in our modern state. Um, so, and, and also, you could trace a very similar development uh, as far as uh, Europe, Western, the former Western Europe uh, is, is concerned as far as uh, the developments of, uh, and uh, the construction processes of the European Union, the European Union is concerned. 1989 is a very important year, uh, of course, but uh, also it's, it's um, maybe sometimes that, uh, that year of 1989 that uh, signifies so strongly political change um, uh, is even making us blind for uh, a couple of developments that have begun even earlier, not only in terms of neoliberalism and Thatcherism in Europe or Reaganism in, 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 uh, in the US or uh, the South American uh, neoliberal regimes or what happened in various, uh, precisely what happened in South Africa, for instance, uh, but also in terms of migration processes um, in Western Europe, uh, because a number of, of, of restrictive legislations concerning immigration in, um, that we know very well and that, that we tend to identify with developments of the 1990s have in fact already begun in the 1980s. Uh, 
in the middle of the 1980s. And even earlier, when we, we, we think about still talking about differences and, and, and how they politically work, when we're thinking about uh, the Sans Papier movement in France, uh, movement of undocumented migrants, then in fact many of the practices, uh, they start, we again uh, tend to identify this with the middle of the 1990s, 1996, 1997, uh, but many of the practices, like squatting churches, uh, doing hunger strikes and so on and so forth, uh, happened for the first time in 1973 and 1974 after the official start of working migration, labor migration. So. Uh, what, what I would like to suggest, also historically, by the way, because uh, that, that comparative objectivization of, 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 of all sorts of nature, of uh, ways of living, not even called cultures then, um, is also having uh, its, its, its own very complex uh, uh, histories and entanglements, like, uh, uh, because one part of that process in the 17th, uh, 18th century is that uh, the motive of not exaggerating differences uh, because that, uh, that wouldn't be uh, stories that travelers were telling from other parts of the world were not uh, considered to be credible. Whereas a new regime of knowledge was uh, started in the 18th century with people like, like Rousseau uh, saying more or less, well, you cannot over-exaggerate differences. Maybe, I mean, there's a passage in Rousseau that I, I find very interesting where he's saying, well, maybe even the orangutans on Borneo are humans that have just lived in that remote place that is the jungle for such a long time that we don't recognize them as humans anymore. Um, so I would say both on an epistemological level and on a political level, um, not in terms of exaggerating uh, differences, but in terms of tracing the histories and, and, and the changes in the history of differences. This is, uh, uh, yeah. I, I, think, I think that's a task also. This is, this is a task and I, I think it is, it is nice to see how, and this is also the part and the consequence of this project, it is the decentering of this uh, event called 89, 90 democratic revolutions, decentering in a, in, a, in a much broader historical context and what, what Bernd uh, uh, mentioned, you know, refocusing on what happened in the 70s. Like, just, it's the first oil crisis, 73. Then this is the end of this promise of, of the ceaseless progression of, of, of the West. This is the first thing. Then, uh, not only is uh, uh, 70, 79 Margaret Thatcher elected prime minister in, in Great Britain and uh, Ronald Reagan comes in power the next, next uh, 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 year. In China, 79, Deng Xiaoping defeats the Gang of Four and introduces within a, a, a dogmatic, most dogmatic totalitarian uh, communist regime a neoliberal politics. In France, it is the end of the future. We can, we, Pierre Nora calls it the emergence of the new memorialism. It is a time when Francois Furet uh, uh, writes in uh, the French Revolution is over. France, that, that was until uh, the end of the 70s, 200 years old, suddenly discovers its pre-revolutionary past, becomes 1,000 years, years old. And something obviously had happened at, at that time that should, that uh, concerns us much more from this new perspective. Um, can I just add to this? Yes, please. Because, of course, um, 1989 is a contested year. And when, when you read through Wallerstein, whom I quoted towards uh, the end of my presentation, he does not consider it to be a moment of world revolution, because world, world revolutions are those that cannot be anticipated. And the fall of Berlin Wall or the collapse of communist Soviet bloc was to be anticipated. 
is disputable. And we can endlessly make lineages and links to orangutans and to thousands years and 1979, et cetera, et cetera. This happened to be for us um, a device to structure the conversation around the notion of formal West. So it happens to be our starting point, and no one says anything happened overnight on 17th of uh, November. Of course, there are, there are processes underway, but this is how we, ha we happen to structure this conversation in order to come to terms with you know, our own lifetime in a way and come to terms of how do we understand the moment where we find ourselves now and how we move forward from here. So those lineages I would not at all, not at all try to kind of uh, detest, uh, etc. But I think as a, st as a structure for our conversation, there's, it's important that we don't connect everything yeah. to everything. Otherwise, there's no way to structure conversation, I fear. Um, may, may I add to that? I think uh, th th there was no criticism at all uh, uh, taking 1989 as reference point. Uh, because w what I think is, and therefore I said, after uh, the West had seemingly overcome the rest of the world, its internal conflicts became visible. So the, the point is really that after uh, 1989, you're uh, trying to come into terms with new time, you also start to reread history. We, we, we have a complete new discussion about what modernity is now uh, than we had before in 1989. So um, we are, and therefore, uh, my, my only point was to say, we, we have to go back and forth now to uh, being in the transition uh, 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 time when we look for new alternative uh, for the next uh, coming years or, or decades. It's always going back and forth, and you reread whole parts of history um, completely different now because of 1989. Catherine. Um no, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not going to ask you uh, what the contemporary art has to, to, to tell us about the historical situation, but rather, how do you think as a curator, and I, I, I was thinking, uh, Ben uh, told us that the idea of the, of, of the House of the Cultures of the World was to invite non-European curators to, to uh, do exhibitions here. Uh, I don't know whether you are European, non-European, whether this today, this adjective uh, uh, would, would have any, any meaning uh, for you, whether, this is my question, and how you as a curator, having experience in, in curating uh, artistic art exhibitions, also here in Berlin, how do you think that concretely the concept of this exhibition here within the Congress, in terms of constellations, prospects, documents, how does it fit into this conceptual historical framework we were, we were uh, 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 discussing now? I think what, what is important, and uh, we discussed it for a very long time when we started to, um, uh, when, when Maria initiated Former West in 2008, and then we started to discuss whether it makes a sense to make an exhibition or not. We, we were discussing what exhibition means. And uh, we came up in the end over the years that um, we are not doing an exhibition. And I think Maria explained it very uh, nicely um, why um, uh, the, the, the idea of exhibition is so much linked with the development of contemporary art and is there is there a possibility to go beyond contemporary art to go beyond the system and we do not have yet an answer of course but um, what we try to do here in Berlin is not to, not to do an exhibition um, and not to do a conference and not to um, um, describe a linear um, um, story from 89 until nowadays and give some new prop propositions. It's more, from my p personal point of view, more, I would say, in German we would say Versuchsanordnung, um, a kind of experimental arrangement, which is very open um, and which might help us also to unlearn, but also to, to de didact cracks where we can um, see or where, we, where the form 
commonness became more clear, and from that uh, um, point of view, we can develop together um, propositions. And I think. Um, you, you mentioned also, and also Bernd Scherer mentioned um, this idea of objects um, or, uh, th that questions us. I think, um, and Maria, please, um, if, I, if you see it differently, please add to it. But I think what we also tried with positioning the artworks in the house, that the artworks have, there's no hierarchy. There's no hierarchy between the artworks, be be between the lecturers, the, the visitors, the students, the conference. It's, it's everything we tried not to, not to level it, but to have a kind of um, same um, starting point. And the artwork are positioned in the house in a way that they also question the, the, the history of the house, which Bernd very nicely also described, but um, which also they might help us also to, get to, to develop a kind of um, new perspectives, because we, also as, as exhibition makers, creators, we are stuck since a very long time um, in, in a moment we, where we do not know how to move on. I started working in this field in the in, in beginning of 90s, and there there was really, we still had a kind of idea of future, of, of future perspectives. We even talked about that. Um, and I would say in the last 10 years, we completely lost it. Um, and what we were specifically facing in the Western world is in the last years that we are not going only uh, back, uh, not what would you say to go back and forth. We are more, uh, this is what I experienced at least in the last years doing researches in, 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 um, in the Western world that they were more um, concentrated on the past and trying to translate moments from the past into the present, but we do not have the ability, obviously, to develop out of it a kind of new idea, new perspective, um, new common sense. Um, and I think this is the specific moment we are stuck in, all of us, who, and, and former West is trying to overcome this, this moment yeah. or to make a, a discussion possible, or kind of is there any negotiation possible. of art to do this, to Pardon? develop? Is there any expectation? imposed on art to do this, to develop new concepts. I think it, maybe that's a, a kind of nostalgia, uh, maybe if specifically from a specific generation, uh, people belonging to a specific generation who were more um, socialized and educated in, this, in, 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 in the idea of ut utopian knowledge and so on, so that there is a, f a future thinkable, but uh, what, what we are what we are facing, I think, and this is also a very interesting moment that we that th this idea of a linear development is not any more um, a, a, a start uh, is not any more a fact to, 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 to continue working on. So we have to completely unlearn um, the structure we, we were educated with in all fields, so also as curators. And I think in this case, also working together with colleagues from other parts of the world is very interesting because the idea of future or the idea of, of the present, the idea of the, of the past is a completely different idea or a completely different concept. And former West tries to, 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 to point on that and, 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 and put it as a proposition on the table in, in, during this week and uh, to discuss it also or to maybe to negotiate it also. Uh, thank you. Um, I don't know whether we have agreed to, to, to uh, um, ask the audience, the students the, or other participants to, to join uh, the, the discussion, but this is what I'm suggesting. Uh, if you have any question, if you ha have any comment, please, I think there is a microphone there. Is yeah, it two? Two, yeah. there. Oh, two. There are two, uh, two microphones. Please come up with, with, with questions, with you know, your expectations of, of the former West or uh, simply a comment. We all um, were somehow uh, motivated when we first time heard this, this notion, former, former West. Probably you have your expectations of what this could, could mean, what this could could uh, also, uh, uh, how this could bring us, bring us forward. So, you are invited to, 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 uh, uh, to ask or to make comments. Yes, please. Is th ah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, well, I have a question. There 
are two concepts that have been mentioned a couple of times today. One is knowledge production and the other is proposition. So I was wondering, I would be interested in hearing all of you or one of you to say a little bit about how you see these two concepts are linked. What do you mean by proposition? Composition. A composition. Yeah. No, proposition. 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 Yeah. What do you mean by proposition? Maybe that's a question I ask you. <laughs> <laughs> or at least that former West is a place to create propositions for the future, how we can imagine the future. Maybe that question goes to Maria, I don't know. I can, um, I can try uh, Thank you. to elaborate on a link between the two. And uh, Catherine already mentioned it, and when I sat here in the morning, I realized we're slightly in a trouble when it comes to vocabularies we're using, um, and not quite with the terms proposition and knowledge production, but how do we call this gathering? And throughout the morning, we refer to it as a congress. You asked about an exhibition, and this is, this is precisely reflecting a trouble that, that we had for, uh, for a significant, significant period of time. What is it that we are doing? Because we kind of quite openly try to seek a new form which will not be an exhibition separated from a congress, separate, a discourse separated from uh, displayed culture, separated from performances and screenings. We, we were trying to seek um, a, a format, in really format terms, where we would collapse, um, collapse these formats into something new, right? Where we collapse, and I mentioned that I think where we collapse the exhibitionary with the discursive, uh, with uh, the performative uh, together and try to see uh, what can happen, what can, what can come out of a situation where exhibition, quote unquote, gets inhabited through, you know, this, uh, the, uh, groups of people, uh, groups of people uh, debating about things, etc., etc. And I think what we have in mind is not engage automatically in this idea of displayed culture when it comes to exhibition making, because to to great extent exhibition making is putting on display things we know. And I think the the, the starting point of the whole former West project, at least for me, was not knowing. I really have no clue how to grasp the situation, what vocabulary, uh, the situation we're in, the condition we're in, what a vocabulary to use, and how to actually impose it on others. So it starts from much more modest position of trying to, um, uh, trying to address the urgencies of wanting to know, but not quite knowing. And we envision this gathering that we quite consciously, in, in this little book, I hope you all have it, we never name what this week is. We never say it's a congress, we never say it's this, or we never say it's, it's something else. We try, we try to envision it as a, some would probably call it an event of knowledge. And the proposition for that is um, to, to, to engage in this kind of, that word was used, decentering discourses that could provide us to create another sort of togetherness with objects of art, with uh, ideas, with performances, with the possibility to negotiate. So I think that proposition and knowledge production, if I needed to invent a link between the two, I think I would articulate it this way, that we really hope this couple of days will be filled with moments when um, certain new knowledges perhaps could evolve, could come to the fore in a different way than they possibly can if you visit an exhibition only or if you sit at a congress by simply uh, sheer collapsing of all these existing formats in desperate kind of desire to, to, think, uh, to, to think about new possibilities. What are the new ways of gathering uh, and being with each other and with um, um, idea or concept of art, not necessarily works of art, but with concept of art as a um, um, imagining of the world uh, otherwise than how we got to know it. I think this would be it. Um, just, uh, uh, John Solomon asked me. Uh, yes, thank you. Hello. Yes, my name is John Solomon. And uh, it occurred to me as I was listening to Bernd's explanation of the house here, um, of the reason why I feel so now so glad to be here, because I've been searching. I don't know so much about Germany, but I've written some things about it, and I've been searching for this precise 
Yes. I've been searching for this precise concrete instance, which is the place where the United States in the post-war era um, concretizes and crystallizes the deal it makes with Germany to include it in the West. Uh, my understanding, my hypothesis, and this is based on a French reading, I don't know if this will be acceptable, is that pretty much for 200 years up until the end of World War II, Germany's place within the West is deeply problematic within Germany. It, that Germany does not want to be uh, simply an imitation of a Latinity or, uh, that is uh, symbolized by France. So Germany has a problematic relation with the West, and even up until the pre-war period, you will see French right-wing, not these are not, these are the old right-wing, saying Germany is in fact not part of the West. Now, it seems that the deal that's made after World War II, the United States is looking to set up a new kind of hegemony. It's a different kind of hegemony than a global hegemony based on colonialism. It's a new kind of hegemony that's based on using the technique, the technology of sovereignty, so that apparently it looks like the nations are autonomous. And of course, this is just after the, the Second World War and pretty much is the moment when the world in general begins to be organized completely in terms of autonomous sovereign nation states and colonialism is put definitively to rest. But this is a new form of domination, actually. It looks like it's going to be a new world of equality among nations and peoples, and it's in fact not the case. It's a new way of defining the apparatus of area as a form of domination. And this is what the United States uh, invites, as we will say, but not exactly impose, but invites Germany into this. The deal is, of course, that you will become part of the West and that the West after that will be unquestionable. The construction of the West will be naturalized. It will look very organic. It will seem as though the West is what it should be. And so then we get this displacement onto art where now art, which maybe, uh, as I understand, should never have been given precisely this historical uh, mission, which is the mission that actually the West in its period of high colonialism had given itself. It was best expressed by Paul Valéry just after World War I when he was very disturbed about what the West might be. And of course, he was very nostalgically Eurocentric. And he was trying to define the West. He said it's, it was quite radical. He said it's not a geography. It's not a race. It's not a religion. It's not any series of specific identities or traits that you could ascribe to it. What defines for him the West, and this is a very Hegelian moment in his thinking, is this attempt always to renew itself and overcome and to become something new. And that's what distinguishes the West for Paul Valéry from any other place in the world. And it's interesting to hear this discussion because it sounds to me like as this um, institutional deal is, is, is you know, crystallized after the Second World War and that the Germany's place within the West and the West itself is now naturalized and concretized, then the problem of the overcoming that is supposed to be the subjective essence of the West, is supposed to be what the West is really about, is then displaced. And the question will be that now a question that's displaced into art. And that poses this continual crisis, right? So it's, I mean, fran I, frankly, I'm just so excited to be here because my project isn't so much about the arts and I have a lot to learn in that respect. Um, but uh, my project is really to understand the uh, transitions in the construction of the apparatus of area throughout the modern period and then into the postmodern period from industrial capitalism to cognitive capitalism. Thank you. Thank you uh, for the comment. There are, there are uh, more. Uh, please. I'd like to ask you to come up. You have to already the microphones. Mic. Yeah. Here. Yes, please. Huh? Yes. And I'm from Colombia, and when I came uh, to Europe, I felt that I came to the future. So when I started to read a lot, uh, I tried to, I discovered that it, I have a hole between that I knew, and now I am learning. And when I came here, is 
exactly to this Congress is, is like a, to come to the present now to try to understand what is happening right now in Europe. And this is about what Catherine was speaking about because your present is quite different from my present and the future is quite different from my future. So responding to the Boris questions is what, what are my, what about my expectations of this, of coming here is to collect questions because mm, nothing is better to, for understanding a situation than, than collect questions and keep with myself and to participate of this present. That's it. Thank you. Yes, uh, we will be very proud if uh, we would manage, you know, to, to produce uh, uh, together with you as many uh, uh, questions as possible. Um, because this is probably, and this is your, uh, obviously your, your feeling, uh, we need more questions, <laughs> uh, uh, much more probably than clear answers. Thank you. Uh, please. My question is uh, about curation. Uh, you were talking about uh, Europe and curation. And it's how is it actually possible for, for there to be a non-European curator? And I'm not talking nationality, I'm talking outside the European pedigree. Well, should, should we try to answer this question? It was, how is it possible to be non-Euro? I, I think it's a good question. How it is possible? Yeah, this is... Pre 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 <laughs> it's a very good question, but very difficult to answer. I think it's yeah. something you have really, it, it's something you can't really uh, perform on the stage now. In a, it, it's really a, a crucial question which needs a really thought through answer. And I don't have it at the moment, I must say. Uh, but, uh, how to be a non, may I a little bit translate, non-Western? Uh, yes. To put it more directly, how to be a non-Western curator. <coughs> I don't have an, an answer, um, but the art system today... It's not the whole project, but it's not the whole week about also this question? Yes, it is. So we should not answer it right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, 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 in fact, w I would say that this is a typical kind of question that uh, doesn't call for a theoretical answer or any kind of answer in terms of a statement, but for a practical answer. Uh, and so in, in, in that sense, it's, 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 it's not answerable, at least not for us, at least not uh, um, in this setting. But I do think it's very, very important because it uh, connects very much to the question about knowledge production and why uh, we tend to use the, a term like knowledge production rather than knowledge, or the difference is even... Uh, greater in, in, in German because there it's uh, Wissensproduktion instead of Erkenntnis. Uh, so why that shift? Uh, and it connects with what Bernd said about the interest in processes and I would say, I mean, speaking as a philosopher if I may, um, it's, it's sort of a theoretical reason, pure reason is not pure reason, is not pure as a theoretical reason anymore. Uh, it is what we have learned, uh, so to speak, is that pure reason in itself has become cr practical reason in, 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 in terms of Kantian dis yeah. uh, distinctions. But uh, I would like to, to add another point, which is why uh, I addressed this morning the topic of unprofessing. Um, you, Catherine, you just used the term of unlearning and all of us uh, feel the need to unlearn. Now, in terms of teaching, uh, one of my answers to your first question to me would also be uh, one need uh, or one task that we have is not only to unlearn, but also to learn how to unprofess. Um, because we keep um, using terms like exhibition, terms like congress, uh, also concepts like cultures. We, we, we keep using things that we don't really believe in anymore. Um, so. What we need to, to, like we keep 
speaking about curating as if it were a global phenomenon, which it is not, which it is in a way when um, an institution like the House of the Cultures of the World in Berlin invites non-European cur curators, but which it is not when non-European uh, curators are in some places outside of Europe, of course. So that's the kind of shift that uh, we, we need to think about, but again, it's uh, the only practical questions and, and, and it's probably something that all of us wish to do together. Um, yeah, two, two, po two points to this. Uh, number one, because I understood there may be a misreading of what I said. Uh, this idea of inviting non-European curators to work here is a past period. It's not that we work anymore in this. This is exactly clear, yeah exactly on these grounds you are explaining now, because they are worked on the basis of reiterating Western concepts here at the house. So basically, the, the West knows what curating is, what the exhibition is, and so, and you have the possibility now to get into this frame as a non-European curator. This is exactly the, the reason why I completely gave that up about uh, six, seven years ago. This is one point. The, the other point I think is uh, conceptually very important is, and to some extent you rephrased it uh, later on again, I completely understand when you say the answer to your question is a practical answer. But the point is, I think, we have to also rethink the theory-practice relationship in a new way, that in practices, theories are ongoing. And uh, it's exactly from there that we have to question also our concepts. More questions, comments, please. Uh, uh, yes, I have a question. I'm here. Yeah? Ah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, ah, you are you are yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, you are. Okay. Uh, you. Uh, they the made me come here. <laughs> okay. uh, so, it's kind of a practical question, I guess. So it comes now when we're talking about practice, uh, but uh, there was no other specified moment uh, to put it. So, it's precisely a question about specified moments because I was looking at the program. And it's like very interesting in the way the setup was created that they told us we are going to be these 150 students and so I'm very thankful to everyone for organizing this and for, to the other students for coming here. But then this morning there was this division in 10 groups and then they told us there are 20 places in every workshop so everyone, from every group we have two people. It's already quite confusing. But then there is like no moment in which these groups, at least from what is specified in the program, reunite to discuss what happens. And they are put to compete against each other. Like, if we have the same letter, we cannot go in the same place. There is no space for the three of us. So it's like, can I have some specification about that? Can, will there be a moment in which uh, all the L's meet together with all the L's and they discuss why there cannot be three L's? And, the yes. same time in the same place. Yes, yes, it is very, very complicated. <laughs> and uh, there will be a moment when you uh, come out now and go to the, to the tables, there will be the manual there, finally, <laughs> with, with all the, 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 the informations you need, and especially informations about the workshops. And, uh, but as, as you know, uh, I mentioned already at the beginning, today, that it will be stressful for you. <laughs> stressful means, means that there was no uh, 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 time within the schedule you know, to, to offer you uh, hours daily, three hours you know, for uh, 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 collaboration, for, for, for joint work, for uh, um, working together in a group, that you are expected to find this time by yourself, each group. This is not only, uh, um, you know, uh, luck in, 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 in the organization. This is something 
uh, that, that is part of this chaos, which is also conceptual chaos. And this is a part of a problem we all have to deal with. So, the first step is just, you know, to come back to the tables and to see the manual on the tables and then we will discuss the next step. But thank you, thank you. And uh, I'm asking you uh, also to, uh, to uh, really come up with every problem, it pops up immediately so that we can uh, 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 ad address the problem and try to solve this problem. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. L last question. I was also told to come here. Okay. Uh, I am Portuguese and my question relates uh, to audience as perhaps a site or a category in which art and politics can be articulated. I say I'm Portuguese because I would like to ask how are we artists or theorists of art or people that live within art are supposed to act before the setting of a global stage of austeritarian measures which normally will focus firstly on destroying artistic institutions before moving on to other social institutions. Uh, and the question of audience is how do we create an audience that might recognize us as a site which they also recognize themselves with. Because we, we heard Badiou and the whole problem of Bad Union ev event is precisely recognizability, if it is recognized as such, as an event. And the question then would be, which crowd, which, which audience would recognize Former West as a site in which they recognize themselves? Are we to find this audience? Are we to create it? Are we to expect crisis to bring about this crowd to be, or does it already exist? That would be my question. Difficult questions. <laughs> um, will you probably try? Just in brief, I can try. Indeed, a complex question, but very important, if not the most important question at this very moment, I think. And again, I can, I can point out that um, because we've, we consider this a key question, we set up the strand on um, insurgent cosmopolitanism to debate precisely this. Now, um, what I think we, we are experiencing at this moment is, um, well, if in the early 90s, I think we, we experienced the shift from a viewer to consumer spectator, which I addressed in my paper. I think we um, we experiencing um, a shift of um, similar depth from that consumer spectator to, dare I say, insurgent citizen. And I think... Um, everything in our field necessarily must change. Art production, institutions, and our relationship to audiences, if the constituency has changed this dramatically, if at the end of, uh, uh, or on the, on, the, on the other side of the negotiation that I refer to, is not uh, bourgeois bohemian or uh, layback um, uh, consumer, but an angry citizen or angry non-citizen. I think that, uh, that necessarily requires um, um, setting up another construction in the field and politically rethink this, what I was trying to suggest, production, uh, dissemination and reception. And um, I would hope that I have more precise answer at the end of this week because this is one of those most important questions that bothered us and that actually led us to setting up one of the strands that we called insurgent cosmopolitanism that will take place uh, on Friday and, uh, Friday and Saturday, um, that we will try to negotiate through a number of lectures, but also performances uh, that artists uh, prepared um, uh, for this particular strand, um, uh, impromptu statements um, um, and screenings. Okay. Um. Reflecting on this, what Maria said, uh, perhaps a last point, um, learning place is a frame where, from our perspective, you got agency to do something. We gave a frame to it. But there are, of course, a lot of possibilities in which you will frame yourself in this process, on the individual level, on groups level, but maybe even on the whole thing. 
uh, there is internet, there is everything at your hand. The way you organize yourself during this week is also part due to you. So uh, I think that should we close the, the discussion because uh, we are running out of, of we have to we are running out of time and we have to clear the the, the, the space for for the next uh, event. Uh, so thank you again and uh, thank you for the guests. Thank you.